Hey, it's Friday morning, April 22nd, and I thought I might just read a little bit of one of my favorite parts of Cat, because one of the cool things that's happened since Cat came out is that I've gotten to see lots of book bloggers reading their favorite parts of Cat on video. And this is a little bit from chapter 9. Um, Cat and her sisters are right about to go to their very first dinner party at Grantham Abbey. It's the first major social occasion that Cat has ever been invited to, and <laughs> she is so not ready for it. But, chapter 9. There must have been at least 50 people in the gallery, and at first all I could take in was a confused mass of gowns and coats and far, far too much high trilling laughter ringing in my ears. But Step Ma plowed straight through the crowd toward our goal. Smile, girls, she hissed through her gritted teeth, and Cat, if you say a single word out of place, I vow I'll see you locked in the nursery tonight, no matter what Rosemary might say. I didn't bother to grace that with a response. Even if I'd wanted to, I was too busy avoiding the hard male elbows that jutted out from the crowd around us, just asking to be knocked into, and the women's hands flung out for emphasis, glittering with rings. I'd never been allowed to attend a single dinner party back in our own village, and those parties only ever included six or eight families, all of whom I'd known my entire life. I'd never even seen this number of strangers before, let alone been required to mind my manners in front of them. For a moment, the nursery actually sounded like an appealing option, but only for a moment. I was concentrating so hard on avoiding the shift of arms and elbows all around me as I followed in Stepmama's wake, I completely forgot to look where my feet were going, so the first sign of disaster didn't come until it was too late. I stepped back to avoid a swinging arm and landed on something soft. My right foot caught and slipped. My arms swung out, searching for balance. I pulled them back before I could hit anyone. And then I lost the battle altogether and fell flat onto my back in the middle of the crowd, knocking into at least three people on the way. My head hit the marble floor with a thud that was almost, but only almost, enough to drown out the ripping sound from around my feet and the sounds of breaking glass nearby. Nothing could have drowned out the shriek that came straight afterward. My gown? What have you done to my new gown? I cringed and closed my eyes. Pain thudded through my skull, but there was no escape. All the laughter and buzzing talk of the crowd vanished if it, as if it had been sucked right out of the room. Then whispers erupted around us, and Dave footsteps hurried toward me. I felt a cool, familiar hand against my cheek. Cat? said my oldest sister, Alyssa. Cat, can you hear me? Her voice shifted as she spoke to someone else above me. She did hit her head. Do you think she... Oh, she's not unconscious, my other sister, Angeline said in a low, scathing whisper from my other side. She's only embarrassed, as well she should be. Come on, Cat, you might as well get out before Step Ma can pull you up by your hair. I opened my eyes. My sisters both knelt beside me, and Step Ma was hurrying back toward me, rage in her eyes. Nearby, two footmen were cleaning up the remains of two broken wine glasses. I let Angeline help me up. I am sorry, I said to the crowd at large, and heard my voice waver pathetically. I tripped. I ordered this gown all the way from Paris, said the voice I'd heard before. It came from a tall, fish-faced blonde woman who wore an enormous sil uh, silk turban like a Turkish sultan. She pointed down at the train for crimson gown. The flounces around the hem had been torn half off. They hung limply from her skirts, dragging against the marble floor. This was the first time I'd even worn it. The whispers intensified. I felt the whole crowd staring at me. I'm sorry, I said again, and curtsied as well as I could. It made my head spin horribly. I didn't mean to, truly. We are all so sorry, Step Ma said. She gave me one of the most furious looks I'd ever seen from her. Catherine is very young and inexperienced, and she will be... You ordered that gown from Paris, you said? Angeline repeated the woman's words with a slight frown, speaking as lightly as if she were only mildly curious. But I knew that look in her eyes. Is that not illegal, ma'am, in a time of war against the French? In fact, I thought it had been specifically prohibited by His Majesty's government. Well, uh, the woman flat fluttered her fan higher as color mounted in her thin cheeks. That is hardly... You would have had to order the gown rather than go to Paris yourself, naturally, Angeline said thoughtfully, as Alyssa's face went paler and paler beside her. For only the smugglers ever actually cross... That is quite enough, Stump Ma said. Ma Madam, she curtsied stiffly to the fish-faced woman. You have our deepest apologies from all of us. If you will do us the honor of having your gown conveyed to our apartments this evening, my own maid shall see to its repair. Of course, what that really meant was that Step Ma would stitch it up for herself. None of us had a maid to do our sewing for us. The fish-faced woman drew herself up haughtily, folding her thin face into fishier lines than ever. My maid, she said, is a genius from France, and she will take care of the matter herself. Thank you very much. She cast one last simmering look at me, and you should dismiss your own maid without references if she's the one who cut your daughter's hair. It looks ridiculous. With a swish of her remaining skirts, she turned her back on us. Supported by two of her friends, she hurried across the room, back toward the stairs to the guest quarters. She was followed by whispers all the way, mounting into a full-out roar of delighted gossip. Stepma turned on me. She couldn't tell me everything she thought, of course. Not now, not under the pressure of all the eyes uh, still upon us. But her face spoke for her. Later, she said.
and twitched her skirts away from me. I guess that's it. I hope you guys are having a good Friday, and enjoy the weather. Bye.